So I'm waiting in line at the airport. It's my millionth time that I'm traveling to India. And there's something about traveling to India where there's hundreds of people, and for some reason each person has 10 suitcases, and every time they get to the checkout line or the check-in line, the suitcases are still overweight. And it requires a lot of patience. And usually I'm very annoyed and irritated, and I'm just waiting to get on my flight. But this time's a little bit different. I'm with Monica. And Monica is my first love. She's somebody, every time when we're together, the outside world just ceases to exist. She has this way of pulling me in. She has this way of grabbing my attention and even like just having me focus on and making jokes about people that we have no idea and I start laughing. I feel bad for the person, but I'm still laughing because her jokes are not always so nice. And so eventually we're standing there and what's so exciting about this particular trip, it's our first big trip together. And it's also her first trip to India. So we finally get through the line and eventually we board and we're in the air and we're on our way to India. And everything's great. We're chatting, we're watching movies, we're, you know, we eat dinner, a few hours pass by. And I just happened to mention that I was having a conversation with my Uncle Art. And, and I said, Monica, I was talking to Uncle Art and I was telling him about his, our itinerary and where we're going. And he asked, is Monica going to convert to Islam? And she looks at me, she rolls her eyes, and she says, like, not this conversation again. I'm not a very, I've never been a very religious person, but in my family, any time somebody married outside of the religion, they would convert and be part of the tribe. And it's just what I experienced. She was a non-practicing Christian who had a very strong mind and very rooted in her values. And she's a woman who just, she knew what she wanted. And this was an issue that she was not going to budge on. We end up getting into a fight on the plane, which ends up with her on my lap crying and me feeling angry, but at the same time, or mostly feeling sad because the tears are because of me. We finally get to New Delhi. We land at 12 a.m. And by this time, we've tucked that fight away with all the other fights that we had on the same issue. We get in a cab, we get to the hotel, it's late, we're tired, and I just realized I booked a ghetto-ass hotel. <laughs> Not a good start to trying to impress the woman I love. And we get into this hotel, and there's something about India with ghetto hotels, they're really bright. Like we walk in and everything's pink. There's pink walls, there's pink bed, uh, bed sheets, there's pink floors, there's even pink sinks and pink toilets. I don't know who's manufacturing pink toilets, but in India they're doing pretty well. So all the walls, it looks like somebody, like a cat has scratched and we're just like, okay, we got five hours, let's just crash out here, we wash up quickly, she sleeps, and I kind of like in and out dozing off, making sure cockroaches aren't camping out on our heads. We wake up in the morning, we, it's, it's 6, 7 a.m. in the morning, and we make our way to the train station because we're going to Agra to see the Taj Mahal and stay there for a couple of days. We get to the train station, and the person at the train station says, tickets are sold out, and hey, you gotta go over here, and he gives us a card, and we're, we're exhausted. We get in the rickshaw, we put our bags in, our bags are on top of us, we get to this office that this guy sends us, and my bullshit meter starts going up and I realize, like, Monica, we gotta get out of here. We gotta get out of here. And she's like, wait, what's wrong? I was like, trust me, we gotta get out of here. We get out of there and I explained to her that basically the guy at the train station tricked us and this guy, he's connected and they're trying to just basically make some money. So, we get to, uh, we take out the Lonely Planet, we get into the, get to a proper tourist office and fortunately this guy Zahid just hooked us up, planes, trains, automobiles, drivers, hotels, and I no longer had any opportunity to fuck shit up. <laughs> so three weeks go by and we're, we're in India, we have seven different cities and there's just, you know, every time I've been to India, there's, 
you know, you harden up a little bit, you know, there's certain things like you see a poor person or you see a kid like trying to sell you a toy, you're just kind of eventually by the fifth, sixth, seventh time, you're like, all right, kid, you know, just get away. Whereas being with her and for the first time and like there's this kid at Daj, outside Taj Mahal like selling this, he's selling this toy, I don't even know what the toy is, and he's like, ma'am, 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 ma'am. And, I'm like, get away, kid, and, the, and, and Monica is just like, oh, he's so cute, let's give him some money, and I'm like, all right, all right. So we continue on like that, and, and everything is smooth, we, we, except for one time we took the train, it was the first and last time, and we were, took the train from, uh, it was a 14-hour train to this place called Varanasi, and if you've never been on an Indian train, it's basically has not been upgraded since about 2000 BC. It has a tin box, and it has the seats that are, you would find in an orange school bus, except a little bit longer and a little bit wider so we can sleep in it. And that's the luxurious part. You hope that in 14 hours that you don't have to use the washroom because really it's just a hole in the ground. And if you go to the washroom, it's on the rail tracks. So we get through that night, and uh, after while we're in the train, the one thing about, again, just being with her, we ended up just kind of sleeping in the same sleeper and just like holding her. And she's been through this whole process just so patient and just kind of going with the flow and really trusting me and, and, cause it could have gone a lot of different ways. And I really appreciate that. And once we got off the train, we got to Varanasi, she's like, that experience was awesome, but let's not do that again. So I called Zahid and I said, okay, do no more trains. And he was like, okay, cool. So the rest of the trip is amazing and uh, we're driving through from city to city and there's like all these different fields and like these, these, you know, just, you know, Monica noticing like, look at all the beautiful women in the fields, they're wearing these colorful saris or she would notice, like we'd go to the market and she would notice the spices and just details that, you know, being there so many times, like I wouldn't even, I've never noticed. So it was really beautiful experiencing it through her eyes. End of our trip, we go to, we're in Bombay, she's flying back to Toronto, I'm actually flying back to, I'm flying to Hyderabad to visit my family uh, for three weeks. And fast forward, I come back, after three weeks, I come back to Toronto. And I'm so excited to see her. We make plans, I go to her house, I knock on the door, she opens, and I give her a big hug and kiss, and we sit on the sofa and we catch up, and on, on the last three weeks, and she says to me, I asked her, I was like, what are we going to do this weekend? What are we going to do? Super excited, like a little kid. And she asked me, she said, I'm s I thought we're, are we still together? I thought we're not together anymore. After that fight on the plane, I just thought you never wanted to be with me again. And just like this is issue that we can't meet on. We keep butting heads on. We both just spent the rest of the evening just kind of crying and like really struggling with with everything at this point, and, and we just decided we'd break up. And I left, she said bye. So a few years, within a, so the next like three, four years, we just kind of like, we had the same friends, and so our life intersected. Eventually we kind of like got back together and not got back together, and like there were sort of ebbs and flows in our lives, and we, you know, and there was this one time where she was moving out of her current place and she had a week where she needed to stay somewhere and she ended up staying with me. She asked me, I said, of course. And it was just like, we never skipped a beat. Doesn't matter what happened, we never skipped a beat. During that time, we also, at the end of the time she was staying with me, we tried to again revisit that issue. It wasn't as bad this time, but we still just kind of couldn't come together on on where, how exactly that would work. A few months later, I started dating somebody. Me and M Monica are still friends. A year later, I call Monica and I say, Monica, I'm, I'm engaged. And there's silence on the phone and she says to me, congratulations, I'm super happy for you. We have a little bit of an awkward exchange and I never speak to her again. Six months pass, and I'm at Sears buying linens for my new plays, and she calls me. And you gotta understand, every time I see her name on my phone, it's like 
you know, love is good for the posture, you know, I like, I stand up and I'm like, this is like amazing, you know, Superman, right? Like, uh, I pick up the phone, she says to me, how are you doing? And I was like, it's so nice to hear your voice, how are you doing? She said, I'm good. She, said, she asked me what I've been up to. And I said, well, I'm in Sears buying linens for my new place because my engagement broke off and we mutually decided to go separate ways. And so she, she listened to my story and then I asked her, how are you doing? And she said, I'm engaged. And I'm just like, you know, sometimes, you know, I'm friends with the universe at this point. And I'm just like, wow, that shit's fucked up. Uh, <laughs> you know, like the way things work out, right? I'm like, Ugh. and I, we're talking so long that I lost track and I'm actually lying in a bed at Sears. <laughs> and I totally forgot that I'm there. And like, eventually we get off the phone and I get off, I get out of the bed, I get out of bed and I see some sales associates looking at me a little bit funny. I was like, don't worry, I'm buying linens. Um, <laughs> So, after we hung up, I knew it was my turn to step away and give her space. And three months later, I'm having dinner with some friends at Gusto on Portland. And after dinner, we say, let's go grab some drinks. We walk over, we say, okay, we go to the beer market. So we walk down the stairs and we walk in beer market and across the room, I see this smile, and I know that smile. But just to confirm, I go over to my buddy and I look at him and I say, hey, is that Monica? He's like, yeah, dude, that's Monica. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. So I walk over slowly and eventually she sees me, we lock eyes, and all her friends turn around and I give her this big hug and, uh, and I go, and I'm like, it's so great to see you. And I said, what's going on here? I was, like, Who's, I was like, whose birthday is it? She's like, actually, it's my going away party because I'm moving to Phoenix where my fiance lives and I'm meeting him in a few weeks. I thought, man, universe, again, this shit's fucked up. I am sitting there, so I have two thoughts. One is, either this is the last chance for me to be with the woman that I love, or this is an opportunity for me to say a proper goodbye. And so the rest of the night, my friends are mingling with her friends and vice versa, and we're all having a great time. Me and Monica are just like in our zone. You know, every time we talk, we forget where we are. We're joking and we're bantering. I go to the bar to grab a drink, and one of her friends comes up to me and she says, don't you love her? Don't you love her? And I'm kind of like taken aback because I actually don't even know who she is. And, and I'm like... I'm like, yes, I, I love her. I, I, I will always love her. She's, it, that just never goes away. And so I look across and she looks across, her friend stays silent and I just see Monica just kind of flowing in the crowd and she's just the kind of person who just knows how to work a room. And every time she leaves a person, she leaves a trail of happiness. End of the night comes and I just go up, to, I go walk up to her and we look at each other in the eyes. And I say, bye, Monica. And she says, bye, Talib. And we give each other a hug. And it's the kind of hug where it's just like, again, we're just lost. It's magnetic. My iron filings are just wrapping around her. And I can feel her crying. And eventually, her friend comes and she pulls us apart. And I just turn around and I walk back up the stairs that I only came down a few hours ago, walk outside and take a deep breath. Thank you.